Good morning, students. Today, our topic of discussion is binomial nomenclature and taxonomic hierarchy. First of all, let us look at what is nomenclature. Nomenclature means naming the organism. Giving name to the organism is known as nomenclature. Now, name given to the organism can be common name or scientific name. Let us first look at common name. Common name is also known as vernacular name. These are those names which are given in a particular region of the world in a local language. So these are the local names which are given in a local uh, or a regional of uh, original language in a particular region of the world. Vernacular names, they are generally single word names. So they are known as uninominal. Uninominal means single word names. Now, what are the features of the common name or the local names? Now, these are based on major and minor characteristic of the organisms. Common names, they are based on the major character or the minor character of the organism. Common names are generally brief. They are not long. I already told you they are uninominal. And common names, they are easy to learn because a person becomes familiar with these names right from the childhood. So they are easy to remember and a person becomes familiar with these words right from childhood. And they are easy to pronounce also. Now what are the disadvantages of common name? Common name are misleading. For example, Myostrosis sylvetica has common name of forget me not and this Common name forget me not has nothing to relate with any character of this flower. Similarly, common names have incorrect meaning. For example, silverfish, jellyfish, cuttlefish, starfish. These are not fishes, but they are still called fishes in their local name. Silverfish is not even aquatic and it's come, it comes under arthropoda. Several organisms have different local names. For example, rose is called gulab in Hindi, golap in Bengal and rojapa in Tamil. So, a single organism can have different local names. So, they, they, were, they were misleading, they were having incorrect meaning. So, the need for the scientific name or technical name arises. So, what are the scientific names? These are those names which are given by biologists. And scientists ensure that these names are universal. And if a scientific name is given for one organism, it has not been used for any other organism. Now, what is binomial nomenclature? Bi means two. So, binomial nomenclature means giving two words name to the organism. In this, first word is generic and second is specific epithet. The first word tells us about the genus of the organism and second word tells us about the species. The binomial nomenclature was given by Carolus Linnaeus. So in binomial nomenclature, we give two word name to the organism in which first word tells us about genus and second word tells us about species. Now, these uh, the, in certain organisms, we also give three word names. For example, Homo sapiens sapiens, gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. So they in these organisms, if a third word is present, for example, gorilla, 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 the three words are present. Then here the third word tells us about variety in case of plants or subspecies in case of animals. Now let us study the rules of binomial nomenclature. So rules of binomial nomenclature are derived from these four books which are International Code for Botanical Nomenclature, International Code for Zoological Nomenclature, International Code for Bacteriological Nomenclature, International Code for Viral Nomenclature and International Code of Nomenclature for Cultivated Plants. So now let us look at the rules of binomial nomenclature. First rule we have already learned that in binomial nomenclature, we give two word name to the organism in which first word tells us about the genus and second word tells us about the species. First word is generic which tells us about genus and second word is specific epithet which tells us about species. 
Second rule is that generic name is written first. It is followed by specific epithet. We always write the generic name first. We always write the genus first and then we write the species. So first genus would be written, then species would be written. And after that, the name of the scientist who gave that name would be written. The third rule is that the genus or the generic part of the name would always begin in capital letter and the species or the specific epithet part of the name would always be written in small letters. Now scientific names are printed in italics and if they are handwritten both the words that is the genus and the specific epithet they are separately underlined not by a single line they would be separately underlined we will underline the genus separately and the species separately name of the author is always kept in roman scripts and these these words the scientific names which we give in binomial nomenclature they are derived from latin or greek language why because latin or greek language is a dead language and there is no chance of any spelling mistakes in it now let us look at what is taxonomic hierarchy or taxonomic categories taxonomic hierarchy it is it means classification of organism from kingdom to species or from species to kingdom in taxonomic hierarchy we categorize organisms from kingdom to species or from species to kingdom first you have to remember that in taxonomic hierarchy we have certain obligate categories there are seven obligate categories in taxonomic hierarchy the first is kingdom and you have to remember this in serial order first is kingdom second is phylum or division third is class fourth is order fifth is family sixth is genus and seventh is species so the seven obligate categories of taxonomic hierarchy are kingdom phylum class order family genus species now you have to remember that phylum or division it is known as phylum in animals and division in plants now apart from these seven obligate categories we also have some intermediate categories intermediate categories which means they would be in between the obligate categories these are sub kingdom subdivision subclass suborder subfamily subgenus subspecies so there there are seven obligate categories and in between these obligate categories are intermediate categories now let us look at the individual obligate categories one by one the first obligate category is species species are the group of individuals which resemble or match each other in their morphological characters and the most important criteria of a species is that a species are able to interbreed freely with one another so humans they can reproduce freely with one another so they will constitute one species similarly the loin they can freely interbreed with one another they would con constitute another species now according to mayer species are the group of potentially interbreeding population which i have already told you that they are group of population which can freely reproduce with one another and they are reproductively isolated from other such group means one species they can interbreed between one another but they cannot reproduce with other species so if for example we have a species of humans so human can reproduce with one another but if we take species of human and other species for example loin they cannot interbreed with one another so species are a group of individuals which can freely interbreed between one another but one species cannot interbreed with other species however this definition of mayer proved to be wrong when we look at certain examples for example mule mule is formed by interbreeding two different species so it is an example of interspecific hybridization mule is formed by crossing between female horse and male donkey similarly 
टाइगन टाइगन इज फॉर्म बाय इंटरब्रीडिंग टू स्पीसीज दैट इज मेल टाइगर एंड फीमेल लॉयन सो सर्टन यू कैन से ऑब्जेक्शन आर देयर बिकॉज वी ऑल्सो हैव सम ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिजम विच हैव बीन डेवलप्ड बाई क्रॉसिंग डिफरेंट स्पीसीज Now let us look at genus. Genus is a group of related species. Now genus, you know the first word in the binomial nomenclature is genus. For example, Solanum tuberosum, which is potato, scientific name of potato. Here, Solanum. It is the genus, and tuberosum is the species because we know in binomial nomenclature, first word is genus and second word is species. So, if a genus has only one species, it is monotypic. But if a genus has more than one species, it is polytypic. Now let us look at example of polytypic species. For example, potato, brinjal, and black nightshade they have same genus which is Solanum, but their species are different. Species of potato is Tuberosum. Species of brinjal is Melongena. Species of black niger shade is Nigrum. so they have same genus but different species so a same genus if it has more than one species it is known as a polytypic species now let us look at family family is one or more related genus or genera the genus of cat is felis and genus of leopard is panthera the genus of cat is felis and genus of leopard is panthera and they are included under same family felidae so we say that cat and tiger or leopard family is same that is felidae now let us look at order order is one or more related families family felidae which includes cat and leopard as i have already told you and canidae that is dog family they are included under order carnivora now let us look at class class is one or more related orders now we all are included human beings are included under class mammalia so class mammalia includes order chiropotera in in which bats are present order carnivora in which we have already known that dog and cat family and order marsupials in which kangaroo are present similarly we have division or phylum division is word used in plants and phylum in animals we know we come under human being come under phylum chordata due to presence of notochord now kingdom kingdom it is the highest taxonomic category and all the plants are included in the kingdom plantae and all animals are included under kingdom animalia